Slash and Cast. All right, so our guest is here. Ooh, Mr. Our guest Jeff is Daniel here. Phillips, Herman Munster himself from there Rock Zombies. The Munsters coming the in Munsters. right now. I don't know why it says that name, but I'm sure what he'll tell us why. It says Page the All. What's that Page mean? Thiel. Thiel. It looks like it says the All. The All. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Here is he coming. There maybe he is. His, maybe it's his there girlfriend. There he is. Who's Paige Thiel? Are you asking me? Yeah. Yes. That's the Ooh. name. It, it, it says That's Paige the name on the, on the bottom of your screen. <laughs> you know what it is? <laughs> I didn't know how to do the Zoom. I had it, but I couldn't remember my password. And they had a, <laughs> they had a PR person that did all this universal stuff. And I was panicked. And I had like eight people I was supposed to speak to. And she goes, here, um take my roommate's code. So I think that's why. <laughs> so, it's still up there. so that's just some chick that lives in Los Feliz that you don't even know. And that's I, your I think it was her roommate too. It wasn't even okay. her. Cause I couldn't <laughs> figure it out. So. Hi so. Jeff. How are you? Welcome to the show. Good. Good. To see you. Hey, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thanks you know, I love coming. these podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done one, but that's good. That's You've never done one? Shit. I've only done a handful for Universal. Yeah. Okay. But they're like 15-minute little slots. Okay. I've never done one on my own. Really? I really wanted to. I find that really hard to believe. I, I'm not a, uh, I'm a pretty private person, so. Uh, okay. You're not a tech guy, hence the reason why someone's roommate's name's on the bottom of your <laughs> yeah, screen. I don't, even know the, I don't even know the person. <laughs> uh, so, so let's get to it let's get to it chris i hear you don't like the uh, the monster oh here we go <laughs> jesus here we go let's hear it throw it at me man we already talked about this we, we talked we already kind of talked about our review of the movie and then i pop in yeah yeah oh that's really chicken <laughs> shit <laughs> oh well I guess that's no, I didn't. I, it wasn't that sorted, man. You're you're no. thinking something way more sorted than what it was. Mm. It wasn't. It wasn't anything like that. Look, I worked on a monsters movie. Yeah, I know how people react to these things, and the monsters to me are, are very near and dear. And I and you know I watched them every day after school for many years, and still watch them to this day. And I own them, and and you know it, it's 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 I'm I'm not alien to. As you know, having worked on, you know, the Halloween movies now and the, and and now doing Exorcist, I'm not alien to to resurrecting old IPs, if you want to call it, and and you know, and and people hating them and people, it's not what they wanted and it's not the, like I get that I get it and I also you know talked about how I respect all the artists and the people and the craftsmen that, that, that go into these movies. I know how hard it is to make a movie. I'm not, I'm not, it's, you know, I get it, but that doesn't mean I have to like everything, <laughs> you know? Wait, hold on. This I, whole I, I conversation thought, was before I just showed up. Yeah. We had this conversation, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I, I will say, I, I love the production design. I thought the, the lighting was really cool. I thought you did a great job. I thought the makeup was great. I thought Wayne did some really cool stuff. There are a lot of things that I did like about it. I, I mean, just overall, I wasn't crazy about it, but that's okay. Right. I mean, eh. but, uh, uh, you, you know, um, I mean, Sean, Sean's like out there going, <laughs> he loves this. Yeah. When he told me, he goes, I told Jeff you didn't like it. I'm like, you there you go. Okay, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> oh, well, I have a technical problem. I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing I said is that's, that's what, what we do here. On that's, the show. that's what that's people what like about our show is we're honest. I mean, you know, um, and, and I did like the movie. Um, yeah, Sean and, really liked it. And there was things I didn't like about it. You know, it, there was there was there was things I didn't like about it. But overall, Nay and I both really enjoyed it. And we you know, we laughed out loud a few times. And and uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. And I think a lot of people get caught up in, you know, when I'm re I'm reading a lot of people online that love it. I'm reading a yeah. lot of people online that say it's a dumpster fire. You know, but I I think to myself, <laughs> what do you guys? 
do you guys actually remember the monsters? Do you, do, yeah. you know, cause especially the ones that say there was no story. It's like, did you ever watch the monsters? Tell me yeah. there was no story. Every week it was the same fucking story. You know, right. oh, yeah. humans find out they're monsters and they're misunderstood and oh, scared. You know, they're scared. It was the same fucking thing every weekend. Um, so I don't know what people were expecting, you know, and people were freaking out at first when it first got announced. Oh, it's going to be fucking redneck white trash monsters and they're going to live in a trailer park and blah, blah. And then they find out it's not going to be F bombs and a hard R. It's going to be made for families. And then they bitch about that. It's like you can't make anybody happy. You know, you can't. You can't. You can't make anybody happy. And Jeff, will, uh, just real quick, uh, I, I, I got to say. I do admire a hundred percent and respect the the approach to it. The 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 fact that Rob and, and you guys approached it as a lighthearted comedy, like I, I really do because it was the only way that you could do it. And I, I and I really do applaud the fact that you did that. I, I thought that was a bold move coming from Rob's history. Mm -hmm. and, and i and i respect that like i respect the 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 vast difference of 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 what we've come to know of his work and 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 a lot of your work really and 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 to do that i thought it was outside the wheelhouse and i thought it was great i i, I did I, I do respect that a lot well he he is a huge fan we all love the show i mean yeah uh he's a huge fan so is dan roebuck they're like historians they would sit there and now we should correct this or make it more like that like the old show or so you know it's just a love letter to the show it was never trying to replace it it's never trying to you know uh, make it better or do that we we just did our own kind of a thing it was an origin story and and in my case that you know herman didn't sound like that or you know but it was again Herman, when we see him in the TV show, he's established. He has a kid. He has a house. He has a job. I'm right off the slab. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. I have this, this Shecky's brain and this body that it's like, I use the analogy. He's like driving a Ford Fiesta. Now all of a sudden he's in a GTO muscle car. And he's just, he's trying to figure out his body. He's childlike. He's wide eyed. Mm -hmm. The jokes are coming out. He meets her. It all comes together. So that's where he is in this story. You know, I wasn't, I'm not an impressionist. I don't do impressions. I don't, but we tried to pay homage to the original because we all loved it so much. You know, we, mm. we were big fans of, you know, Fred Gwynn. I am. So. But if you know, you'd have done an impression of him, if you'd have done an impression, that wouldn't have worked. You, it, yeah, but it, people have it, done that, I think, or tried to. But they I'm, have, you know, absolutely. A few, quite a few times, but I, I just don't think that you were that was the right way to go what you did it's not you don't do that but we are also like there were certain things like even the voice cracking and all that um like sean i know you're a big howard stern fan yeah. and if you listen to his early tapes and stuff his voice is always up there and he's like yeah. and now he's like the, the cool whatever he keeps us so some of that we were just like playing with everything we could about how this guy started and where he was headed mm -hmm. so that's that's where that came from anyway well, it seemed like Dan Roebuck definitely tried to do a uh, Al Lewis impersonation. I and mean, yeah, yeah, that's you'll have to talk to Dan about all that. But yeah, that that wasn't my approach. But he definitely, uh, and he's from that same part of the country, and he felt like that was his approach. And you know, and a lot of people love that. So whatever works. Do you th did you going back to what you said? You said something really interesting, which was. Um, you were right off the slab and, it, and, it, and it's an origin story and, it, and, it, and it's different. It's a different, dare I say, younger Herman or character than it, than it was in the, in the television show. I'm curious if, was that a conscious choice that you, yeah, that you made to do it that way? And would you do it differently no. if it had picked up much later? Would you, would you have? Well, yeah, if that? I was closer to the show, we'd probably have mm -hmm. a different discussion, but we know he was just created. I mean, mm -hmm. We know he was trying to find his voice. We know he was trying to he was trying to understand why he has all these jokes in his head. Mm -hmm. You know, all, all that stuff came came into play, and and all of a sudden he thought, oh, you know, I got to go to Hollywood. All that kind of stuff. They were in the script that was built off of that. Totally. Can you? I haven't even heard this story actually. Um, 
but can you tell me about how Rob approached you about doing the part and when did it get brought up? And it, Like 12 years ago, he was going to do it at one point. And I remember getting the call. I was driving. I pulled my car over and I go, what do you mean? And he goes, yeah, I'm about to do the Munsters. Or I'm pitching it. Do you, I want you to play Herman. Are you up for it? And, it, you know, I was like, you know, almost hyperventilating. I was like, what do you mean? You know, and, <laughs> and he goes, well, I'm talking to these guys right now. I'm pitching it. And then sure enough, it went away and they did it with, uh, you know, Jerry O'Connell and, you know, they did that for, and so that went away. And then again, it, it came into play like three or four years ago. Mm-hmm. And then again, it would just get stalled or delayed or nothing happened. So this happened like three or four times just over the last, you know, two or three years where we were all getting ready and then it would stall. And then we were all like, it's going to happen. And then it wouldn't happen. And COVID hit, obviously. So, um, yeah, but in in the beginning, I was very anxious. I didn't know how I was going to pull it off. And then I started studying, you know, watching all the episodes and then it went away. And then, uh, then every time I jumped back into it, I became more relaxed with the idea. By the time we went there, I was just like, okay, let's just get it on. You know, I I, I didn't have that, that original nervousness. How am I going to make this work? You know, anybody going to like it? I I don't really care about that. I was just, I knew what I was going to try to do. And he was going to guide me through it too. He's a good director when it comes to that. Did he have any ideas of taking it further? Um, Like, you know, uh, another movie, a series, any, I mean, was there ever talk of beyond this movie? It's never been discussed. Not with me. No, but I, I mean, you, you read enough about it. Everybody's excited about it. I, I get a lot of positive stuff. There was like, you know, months and months of negativity before it even came out. Yeah. So once it came out, I just got like the last week and this week been kind of like just a flood of love for the show and, mm-hmm. And how, uh, you know, I watched it with my grandfather, my father, I watched it with my kids. It's like, it's that type of movie that none of us have ever been involved in, ever. So it was, it's a real trip. And then I just heard another take on it, which I thought was really cool. Um, someone said it was, it's almost like those shows they would do like 80s, 70s, and they would do a special like a Star Wars Christmas special, or yeah. like they do a special episode of, yeah. you know. It definitely felt like that. I know. And exactly it, it, yeah, and it had that just zaniness and the color yeah. and the comedy. And, yeah. and it's like an NBC Halloween special. Right, but people yeah. love that too for that retro reason. They really yeah. like brought back. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool too. I never, I, I didn't connect that mm-hmm. while we were making it until now, I guess. I could definitely see that. That's a that, that that's a whole different take on it. And I, I get yeah, like his kiss shows up at that one yeah. Halloween one yeah. with Paul Lynn. The the Paul Lynn Halloween oh, special yeah. or yeah, like Kiss Meets the Phantom in the Park. This is Monsters, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren Florence Henderson shows up or whoever. Exactly. Yeah. Crazy. Pinky Tuscadero. <laughs> <laughs> and Billy Barty. <laughs> and Billy Barty. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'm curious how you felt about like <laughs> obviously the heavy makeup let's that's the elephant in the room and the, and the whole you know the well you know how yeah i mean i did the geico caveman for a decade so i was used to all that all the prosthetics and whatnot but this was it was four hours a day uh-huh. to get in and an hour to get out uh-huh. and uh this makeup crew in budapest they were they were the best they were yeah. those they were all women too. It was really, it was really great. I mean, they saved me those and the costumer, there was a woman that would be my handler. And I always had like three or four of these ladies, like kind of keeping me together. And because I, obviously that suit, it was like wearing a wetsuit. So we had two of them. And I was always 15 degrees hotter than everybody's, you know, just dripping wet. Plus I had the, you know, the rubber top and no no skin was exposed so i was just dripping wet and by lunchtime we would switch out the suit and put me in a dry one you know Mm -hmm. and then i'd continue the day so those ladies just like kind of kept me together while i was melting and falling apart and then i would get you know they were great they were really great really professional very sweet i was really happy with that because i've had all sorts of that that geico caveman i've had a number of different people work on me 
right. you can definitely tell the people that really care, you know, yeah, yeah, and know how and uncomfortable it could be. Did you, did you, when you put the makeup on, let's say for the first time or at some point, was that helpful in you finding it? Oh yeah, for sure. You and, know. And, and did you work that like in a mirror? Only totally work that you? like, like, uh, like in a guy coast up, it was always under silicone. And you had to move your face so much just to get it to move because it was, you know, I had that. But this, um, I didn't have anything over like the majority of my face. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't so bad. But as you know, I don't, I don't know. This is just the thing that I end up doing. It's not no secret, but I, I try to keep myself moving so people don't focus on where a seam is or, or you, you know, how do they do that? Like, I'm sure you study guys and wonder like if it's a close up on somebody, but if you're always moving and trying to make this guy animated and young and light and like just a big kid, you don't focus on some of those, you know, details, I suppose. So yeah, once I put everything on, uh, we did a camera test. I, I, I didn't stop moving or dancing or whatever to the point where I was passed out because I was dripping wet and I just got really lightheaded. And from then on, I just had Gatorade next to me the whole time because wow. um, I, I just tried to push it. I just tried to see like how much I could get away with, how much I could dance, I could, you know, how I could move and just keep it alive, you know? Right. And what about you guys? What are you guys up to? <laughs> Well, we're all getting ready for Monster Son of Monster Palooza. All That's three right. of us are going to be there. That's right. Are you going to be there, Jeff? You're going to be there too. Awesome. Friday night, I'll be there. Yeah. Okay, I'll be there. What are you Saturday. working on right now, Chris? I know you're working on something. I'm working on The Exorcist. Oh yeah, that's right. Another movie that everyone's going to rip apart, just like Monsters and Halloween, and <laughs> you know, people yeah. just love to rip shit apart. Man, but, and did did Scott know. Teams do a draft on that? Uh, he did. I think he did a little. There's a gentleman that I don't recognize actually mm -hmm. on the, on the writing team. David, of course. Uh, Danny, of course. Scott did had some involvement in some previous drafts. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's stuff left over. Yeah. And um, when are you shooting it right now, or we're I'm prepping it right now. I leave in a I leave on Sunday to go uh, shoot it. We start shooting officially October 24th. Mm -hmm. Wait, should I say this on on anyway? Yeah, doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we start shooting in. Um, uh, I'm excited about it. We got some really cool stuff, and you know, again, we're 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 gonna do what we do, and people either dig it or not, and they'll bag on it or they're not. <laughs> you know, but hey, man, it's it's fun challenge. So, yeah, so it's gonna be yeah, cool. Yeah. That's, That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'll, that'll be that'll be me for the rest of the year, and in, into next. And where is that in Atlanta? You said or no? Atlanta, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And Sean, Sean, what are you up to? Constantly, I feel I was telling Chris earlier that I've just felt like I'm constantly can't get caught up. I'm every I'm, I come home from a convention and I'm immediately trying to prep for all these other ones. You know, ordering photos, ordering banners. You know, getting flight stuff and 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 calling back promoters and signing contracts and it's just like there hasn't been a break it's just been non-stop i'm really looking forward to like november december january because that's when it slows down uh i just uh i just need a break i need a break <laughs> but you've been I, I noticed that you've been sneaking in these uh these uh shoots like uh, um for your hollowed grounds or like your your behind the scenes and well I, it's funny i was telling chris i i have been i've got a ton of content i just have had no time to edit any of it um so yeah i didn't tell you about this chris when i was in at monster mania in uh and you were there jeff yeah. uh in uh, maryland i um what day did i do that i think on probably Saturday. thursday or during the no, week i think i think i did it saturday 
they yeah saturday i after i got everything up and running got bernthal in there got him going made sure everybody was good and i borrowed tina's car because she lives in maryland and i drove to georgetown because i started filming if you remember last september 2021 i shot horse hog grounds episodes for exorcist and exorcist 3 but there was one location I couldn't get in because uh, it had still been closed because of COVID. It's a, a bar called The Tombs. And there's a short bar scene in Exorcist where you see uh, Jason Miller get a drink at the bar and walk over to a table. It's real mm -hmm. short. But in Exorcist 3, it's the whole lunch scene between George C. Scott and the priest. Mm -hmm. And that takes place in that bar. And I'm just such a like, I have to get everything. So that I've I've been sitting on this damn thing because I needed to go there and get that. So I, it's an hour and a half drive. I jam. I mean, I I did it in about an hour. Went there, sat down, ordered lunch, filmed in there, ate my lunch, jumped back in the car and jammed straight back. <laughs> and the funny part about that was I'm sitting there. They're bringing my lunch and Bernthal texts me, "Yo, man, I need some food." I ain't eating the shit at the hotel. And I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, I, I, I got tea in his car. What do you want? And he sends me his order from this juice bar place. <laughs> and I figured he's going to get busy and he'll forget. Literally, I go to the juice bar. It takes me like, by the time I, you know, this is over an hour. I get it. I'm driving back to the hotel. Like I'm two, I'm two minutes from the hotel yo man i'm gonna fucking go get my own shit i'm leaving right now and i go no no i have it i'm pulling up right now <laughs> like, so it, it worked do you do out. that jeff do you do you demand yeah you? i always demand everything <laughs> <laughs> no I, you know it's like funny sean has become a bigger celebrity than anybody he walks through they all want to take a selfie with them or yeah, right. hear a story or you thing know. with two heads it's huge yeah man they, Chris, no, they, was saying, he, Chris was saying he was getting stopped at this concert the other night by tons I was. of people. I, was. Right. I was watched crazy. this show. I went to the Taylor Hawkins tribute concert. And, oh, that's and good. People were like, dude, with two heads, man, can I get a picture? I'm like, are you shitting me right now? <laughs> really? Really? You know I have an Academy Award. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also, I, I also witnessed in Long Beach like that. I mean, I have to say these cons. I mean, we have to thank Sean for this, that, you know, you just learn so much from all these horror fans and like their passion and they're, and they're so, I, I don't know. It's like between coming up to you, Sean, or I remember the kid that was making these masks in Long Beach and you, yeah. and you sat down with them. You were telling him how you went about it, like some materials he should try this and that. I was giving this kid advice. Where I mean, I was into this kind of stuff as a kid, but you'd have to read a magazine. You'd never meet the person, you know. I mean, yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's just it's just too cool when you when you think about these cons. I don't know. I, I'm oh, really, it is great. I think the cons are. are yeah. I think the cons are so. They're they're just so great. I mean, and the people are so great, and it's just a great opportunity to meet people and fans and stuff and people that love you. I mean. Again, going back to Monsters, Monsters getting a shit ton of love, man. I, I remember before it came out, it was getting a, a shit ton of hate. And I was like, why? You haven't even seen it yet. What do you, it could be great. What are you talking about? And then it came out and it got, there's a ton of people that really love it and really yeah. like it. But I think that no matter what you do now, you're, because people are so able to be vocal, all, all the voices are easily heard now through social media and 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 all that stuff it's 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 easy to hear all as much of the haters as it is for the love stuff i think you got to focus on the on the people that do like it and and i um there there are a tremendous amount of people that i'm happy or really pleasantly surprised with the monsters and it proved them wrong and i think that's an awesome thing don't you i always get a kick though like i have to see who some of these people are sometimes and it's like you you go to their Facebook page or something, <laughs> and they're with their family, and we love church and this, and you're like, whoa! I, I feel sorry for your kids if you're if you're this <laughs> nasty <laughs> and ruthless. Like, yeah, you know, you just attack me, my career, this and that, yeah. and then you 
goes back to being a great father, number one. Right. The coach <laughs> of the baseball team is like, really? <laughs> like, I guess maybe he needs to do that to stay, you know, sane doing the nice stuff. I, I don't know. Like, it's mostly dudes and it's mostly – they're usually the most, you know, ruthless and, and, and the most vocal in the I beginning. Agree. Yeah. not now not now it's like the, quite the opposite it's been pretty cool but my favorite recently is i had somebody post something on instagram that had it tagged me you know my my profile said at c nelson effects and a poop emoji yeah and then it had all the pictures of the mass i did for halloween with poop emojis over them and it was just a screen full of poop emojis i was like this is awesome <laughs> i'm like the effort that you have to go to to just you know it's amazing. And that's the other thing. It's like, oh, this is just an idea. He wants to capitalize on something, Rob. And Rob is like the hugest fan. I sure. mean, I, I brought some of the stuff like he obviously you guys know. It's like these albums he creates, like yeah. he designs everything, like anything that you're wearing. You wear a T-shirt in his movie. He's done the logo, like you name it. I mean, even that that Zombo that here, this whole box this zombo doll uh-huh he did this it's like the it's the uh the cereal box but like you know like every detail on it like yeah this whole thing uh black plague starter kit like all this yeah. stuff <laughs> the one that came up with all this stuff yeah. i mean if there's not a guy that loves this stuff more than him i mean sure sean but and that's another character that you played he played zombo also yeah, I played zombo and then uh shecky this other guy and then everybody played multiple characters richard Brake. there's a great example of a guy who doesn't ever get to do comedy and he had a ball man he was so yeah. funny just to cut loose and do those characters they're so over the top yeah and he got a kick out of it and i think everybody got a kick out of knowing he did two different drastically different characters and I don't know. Sherry played a few characters. Dan, he's the same thing. Dan, Dan cracked me up as that um that interviewer. He just put that nose on awesome. and a wig, and he just I couldn't stop laughing. Like he he's just a funny guy. So when you're all when we go over there and there's only like five or six of us for three months, yeah. I mean, the fact that we we're still laughing at, at the end and, and making yeah. each other laugh, I mean, there's something to say about that. I thought. Uh, Jorge was really funny. He's great, and, and and also the the dude from Doctor Who, the the mm -hmm. Butler guy. That so guy. Buster McCoy. Yeah, like, I've he met came him out of nowhere. We we none of us really knew him or knew his work, and we're like, holy shit! I've <laughs> met him a few times at conventions over the years because of the Doctor Who shit. And I, I'm not a Doctor Who fan, but I've I've seen that guy in the bar at hotels uh, after hours. He puts them back, boy. <laughs> and, and he's a and he's a funny dude. He's a funny he dude. Great man, he was great. But it was funny since we were there for three months. There was a curfew going on, so everything was shut down at like seven or eight at night. None of the restaurants were open. We're in this hotel by ourselves, and um, like soon as someone come in for a week to shoot their stuff, we were like, you know, what, what's the news from the outside world? You know, like because we didn't know what was going on. It was way early. Nobody was, you know, vaccinated or anything. So yeah, like he was great. I didn't know who he was, but we hung out for a week. Jorge came in for a couple of weeks. Richard came in a little longer. Um, Cassandra Peterson was so much, she was so sweet to hang out with. She was fun. Catherine Schnell, she uh, she grew up there as a, as a kid. She was there and taken away during one of the wars or something like, and she- What lived, character was she? She was the like the gypsy lady. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, and and she was she's a well known for her, you know, more like sex pot, you know, sexy. Uh, it was a space show in 1999 or one of those shows. Space I, 1999. I don't know. I can't remember. I think it was that one. I don't. I could probably look it up. But anyway, she's always a sexy kind of Bond girl esque, and she had great stories. So it's like everybody would come in. There was only so many of us, so that's why we ended up playing all these different characters. So. Mm it made it more challenging, but it kind of kept us on our toes. Um, and that Zombo thing that you said, um, I think that thing, I don't know if I get, I'm going to get in trouble, but we shot a whole uh, episode of his TV show and that might be dropped somewhere along the way. So I don't know. Oh, that's cool. Clip. 
Yeah, yeah. it was it was space in 1999. I looked her up. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Mark Landau. She was, she was quite striking. Real sweetheart. Real sweet lady. So I think we got really lucky, like, you know, some of his choices on the character actors, but and we got to uh, watch we got to watch that Zombo episode. Rob showed it to us. Yeah. On his phone. <laughs> on his phone. <laughs> it was just a cheesy black and white thing, yeah. but that was one of the first things I shot. And it's almost like I forgot I shot it because it was so long ago. And oh, that's cool. And I that was right before we went into the real shooting for all the months, the Herman stuff. So yeah, it was a trip, man. We just like I learned like two or three comedy routines. I knew all the songs. We recorded all the songs before. There's uh, there's about a half dozen songs we recorded, but even that was like, you know, COVID-esque. I think one was before. But I was recording in his closet, um, you know, uh, and he was in the other room. And one one I did over the phone that was just released that was called Electroshock. And that's another one on the Internet. Um, it was on YouTube. They just dropped it one night a couple of weeks ago. But uh, but, yeah, I just recorded that on my phone in a, you know, a quiet room here. And then he, he was able to put it and mix it together. So it was a trip. It was a real like challenge. That the Shecky character was that kind of a play on that character you've been doing for a while. Yeah, yeah, little, yeah. What's Shecky. that? Is that what's that character called? It has a different name, doesn't it? Uh, Eugene. Eugene, that's right. Yeah. Eugene, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shecky, yeah, that was fun. That I mean, yeah, that was the whole two comedy acts that we did, and we filmed them like it was in one of those um, brick wall kind of comedy uh, routine, you know, comedy shop or store or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. This was called the funny shack or something. I don't know what it was called. Like, I, but, now, I remember, I, I don't if, if you're okay with me telling the story, I don't think you, oh. you wouldn't be. But no, I remember when you got the part, you called me, but you wouldn't tell me what it was because <laughs> you were sworn to secrecy. And yeah. he called me up and he's like, you know, I, I got this role. It's going to be a game changer. I'm, I'm, I, you know, but I can't tell you. And I'm like, fuck, man. And then COVID happened and it got delayed like a whole year. Yeah. 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 Everybody didn't believe me after a while. Like, yeah, yeah, I can't <laughs> do something right. But the, the funniest part, what well, was sort of funny, not funny, was when I text you the current congratulations text. <laughs> Cause I was at a car dealership getting my car serviced and I saw the news break, you know. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, dude, congratulations. And you responded, congratulations for what? I'm like, the Munsters. And you're like, where are you hearing this? <laughs> I'm like, it's online. But That's why it was so weird even a couple of weeks ago. It was almost kind of a relief. Just everybody can see stuff. Yeah. The behind the scenes stuff. And I don't know. I, I get it, though. It's, and, and obviously, people were crapping on it and they didn't see anything. So why would you want to share it even more? You know, or why yeah. do you? Tell people earlier to to build up more animosity. I don't know. There's no point. But no, it was a great experience. I'm super happy. I'm super happy. uh, Like I said, like all these people, you know, reliving this thing that they really loved or making them want to watch the show again or a a gateway for their kids to get into horror because they can never show them anything, especially Rob stuff. And then uh, us, we're all just tickled that we're in something that you could show a family member and right. <laughs> you know what I mean, like my, you know, yeah. Let's see. So now you got the the Blu-rays out. You got the records out. There's tons of toys coming out. What What are you most excited for? Like, are you wait? Are you an action? Fi- were you an action yeah. figure before? I, now I don't think so. Were you? Is this uh, your first action figure? I was a bobblehead as a Geico caveman, but uh, other than that, not an action. But this is your first like I figure, yeah. Well, that, that feel the Zombo and the the um, Herman. How does that feel? That's got to be awesome, right? Yeah, you know, it's funny is um. So Dan has all these characters that he has. Have you seen his stuff? I mean, I know you. Yeah. Have, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like every point in his career, he has this thing. It's it pretty amazing. Like yeah, but he's making wow. them himself. <laughs> that's that's, di- <laughs> that's, that's different. What I was gonna say. I, I, mean, like, I think it's brilliant. I think it's so brilliant. I think this is a guy who lived his life collecting it, and now he's like the actual thing. I think it's yeah. great. No, he's extremely excited about the NECA. Yeah, and I think I think that's a great. That's definitely a you know 
That's cool. Something I, I've never actually even asked you before, and I've known you a long time now, is how did your relationship with Rob begin? Because you've done so many films with him now. Obviously, you have a, a lot and music videos and you have a long relationship. How did you meet Rob? It, I, you know, it's just it's just an audition. Oh, you just went in as an, an audition. The funny thing is I auditioned for Devil's Rejects. Hmm. I didn't get it. And I mentioned that to him like years later. And this is how how he is, because he auditions off of tapes. So this is how he is. Is like I said, yeah. And I, I came in as the uh, deputy in, um, in Dave Walter, Sheridan. Walter Gogan. Or, oh, oh Dave, Dave, Dave Sheridan, that, that deputy. Okay. I think it was a deputy. Anyway, um, I the little bit I read, it's like everybody was all full of testosterone. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go Barney Fife, you know, I'm I'm gonna go in the opposite. Mm -hmm. And that's not what he wanted. But also he said, Yeah, they, I've already I already cast Dave. I think they were just trying to cover themselves by reading people. And so I go, Oh, well, I mean, it doesn't matter. I think he was great. He was really, you know, funny and great and everybody. But then all of a sudden, like I don't know, probably half an hour later, or maybe an hour later, he sends me the actual audition of me. He still had it in his computer. Like he would collect <laughs> that stuff. Right. Like it's, it's kind of unheard of, you know? And yeah. he was able to just pull it up and send it to me. He goes, here it is. I'm like, oh, geez. It's like, so obviously something stuck in his head and he's like, okay, maybe I'll use this guy down the line. And sure enough, he did. So it was very cool. And the first thing you did with him was Halloween two. Halloween two, and you and got the to play first, two characters. Yeah, I played two characters. But the Halloween two, I I showed up, and I briefly met him, like a, you know, just got the costume, and then fast forward to like in the middle of the night, approaching Michael Myers and about to get my head stomped, and uh, that was the first time we ever really had any conversation. Rob, he was, you know, he's a pretty quiet you know, passionate, focused guy on set. He's, you know, he, he focused on his, what he needs to do. So you're not going to bother him or, you know, but it, we're about to shoot the showdown between the two of us. <laughs> and, I, and I go, hey, is there any way I can do, I can riff a little like off of any, and he, and he just looked at me like, this guy's going to be the biggest pain in the ass <laughs> ever. And he goes, just, he goes, just, just do my words first. Okay. Just do my words. And then maybe we'll do after. Right. So I said, Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. So we did it. And then, and then I riffed and then they go caught and everybody was laughing and he goes, okay, I'll, I'll let you have some more. So he kept, he let me, you know, riff and a lot of that stuff, we came up right on the fly and all of those jokey lines about, you know, don't give me no reason. And, you know, Dorothy hit the brick, like all this Kimosabi, whatever it was, I was just throwing all these nasty stuff, trying to, you know, get this guy more riled up. And obviously, you know, Tyler Maines gave me nothing. Um, <laughs> and not as an actor, but as, as the character. So it was like, uh, it, it was funny. And he, I think he just got a kick out of that. And that's, I think I won him over that moment. Like, okay. This guy can deliver, but he wants to do even more. And that's how it is on a set. It's like performance is, is the most important thing to him. Like if, he's, if he sees something going well or he, he likes, he just lets you go. If he sees stuff not going, he just cuts it on the fly. And in and, and 31, I was supposed to die with the chainsaws. And that morning he goes, okay, you're going to live today. I go, oh, okay. So it's like, then I got to the next point and a woman with chains is going to kill me, E.G. Daly. He goes, no, no, you're going to make it through that. Like he would just give me sides every morning. So if he likes the way things are going, he just keeps, keeps it going. He's very organic like that. And that's what keeps you on your toes. But it also shows like he, it, it's almost the music background. I always think um, he's just like a jazz conductor or something. He comes up with a composition and he writes stuff so his actors get their moments, you know. But if he sees someone riffing that he likes, he just he lets them go or he, he tries to uh, shape it in a way that that brings them out more. I mean, Richard Brakes had some of those moments. I mean, we've all had moments like that with him. So that's why he's one of my favorites. You know, he's just he probably is my favorite. 
when he do you guys like the actors he loves character actors he wants you to invest in them now when did you get, find out you were gonna play the uncle coffins how, so, how did, so yeah so i finished my shoot and he goes hey what are you doing next week someone bailed out i go what do you mean he goes um next week there's a there's a party scene i go oh, okay I, i'm going back to la he goes all right we'll fly back in on monday and we're gonna you're gonna do this hostess show and I'm not a stand-up comic and, and I'm like kind of shitting in my pants and I'm just like writing stuff on the plane, trying to come <laughs> up with a comedy act. And, uh, and so I had all these notes and sure enough, there's 150 people. He shoves me up there and I just went off this guy who gets too drunk and he, and he, he eventually falls off the stage and he's, you know, he's, he, he, he's complaining about how all the kids leave him once they reach puberty and, you know, nobody watches the show and whatever it was, it was just, so he got a kick out of that. Right. And, and every time you go, okay, you got another, I need you to do another five minutes. So I go up there and do another thing and I just do it. I did it like five or six times. And I ripped, a, I ripped in the Malik at one point. I said some jokes about him and just to make Rob laugh. I mean, it, it was crazy. And I didn't care. I was just, you know, I was going to go on fire anyway. Yeah. So he liked it so much. I ended up um, emceeing some of his rock shows. It's the same character. So again, if he likes the way it's going or something that you're doing, he, he pushes it. So there's not many guys that will do that. I don't know. Especially in the fly. Mm -hmm. and so, you've done how five movies with them now five movies and like i said mc i've done music video and i don't know whatever i've done a, songs with them now it's just it's, yeah i mean if it all ends today on this movie i i haven't i owe him a lot and i i'm grateful that he you know he was cool enough to you know bring me aboard so yeah <laughs> well you know you went to the show it's like He's in the middle of doing some huge rock show. There's whatever, 15,000 people there. And he was like so happy to see us. And and the show's yeah. about to go on. And he, you guys want something to eat. And he's just, you're part of the family. And then he goes off and, you know. I've been, I've cool. been backstage a lot of concerts. And most of the time, they barely have time to say hi to you. But but he i was shocked he was like chaperoning us i mean <laughs> he took us out to the bus he think hey come on here come get some food go in here and i i know zach from shinedown he's like that too i'm sure you mm -hmm. experienced that the other night chris mm -hmm. um but some guys will be just like hey yeah you know you guys can go over here but uh, i'll see you after the show mm -hmm. uh, you know and you barely talk to them you know mm -hmm. Well, it was also 90 something degrees, even during the performances, like, whoa, I almost passed out, you know, like you knew, like he's jumping all over the place. And then afterwards, he still had enough energy to like show us out and show us the 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 wrap of the monsters on the tour yeah. trunks and stuff. It, yeah, it's like he, he's just And he was excited to do it. He wasn't I mean, he yeah. wanted to show he wanted to show us that Zombo episode. He want he wanted to, you know. He was excited to show it off. I mean, which I get it. You could, I could feel his, you know, as a collector, you know, I like to show people my stuff. You know, I collect these things, but I love showing it to people who appreciate it. You know, somebody, you know, like Nay walks in, she goes, hmm, okay, cool. You know, uh, somebody who's into it, you know, they go, holy shit, dude. Like when I was showing, um, I recently got Dr. Hill's head from reanimator and I, and Mike Flanagan, you know, director of Dr. Sleep and haunting a Hill house fall lipped out when he was like, Holy shit. Can I hold it? Can I, I mean, he was like, like, he's like, dude, I want to come to your house. I need to see your stuff. And you know, like, we exchange numbers. I mean, he's like, he's like a big fan. And I, you, I get that same enthusiasm from Rob, you know, he's a big fan, you know, but he's also like that on sets too. Like, people go to on his sets because he's so enthusiastic like you want to match his passion and his yeah. and his excitement you know you don't want to come in half-assed or not know your stuff or like everybody that works with them that's that's how why they're there say mm -hmm. sherry is is she's been nothing but great to work with she's she's so professional and and she comes prepared and present yeah. when acting with her like that. I mean, I think so much of the chemistry works because 
we're all friends and I've known her now and I've done five films with her. And, and I think it works because of that, you know, and she's just, she's a real sweetheart and, and a friend, but she's also completely professional and, and she only works with him because she wants to people yeah. ask her to do stuff all the time, but she wants to do his stuff. She's his muse. She does the, she does his album. She does all this stuff. And when you're working with her, you don't have to worry. She's egoless. You don't have to worry about someone worrying about their camera, their light or whatever. You're like in a scene with her. And it's not always like that, you know, and that's how he chooses his actors. A lot of us are like that. We don't, we're, we're not about like, you know, what's my angle or how am I going to get this coverage? Anyway, I just, I just think I really loved working with her again. And we always, there's always something that happens when we're on screen together, like, whether we're foes or, or in this case, you know, Herman and Lily. So she's, she's great. Well, make sure if you haven't picked up the Blu-ray yet, check it out on Netflix right now. It's streaming and probably will be, I don't know, forever. I don't know. Forever. <laughs> I haven't seen the behind the scenes. That'll be interesting and all that kind of yeah. stuff. I haven't seen it because it's good. I, I watch it. on a Blu-ray. So. Oh, cool. I, I told you I'd let you borrow it. I know. I know. I got. <laughs> I'll eventually. I'll. I'll check it out. But I. I did it. So I maybe I don't need to. <laughs> All right, well, if there's any chance, I probably isn't. But if there's maybe, I might be able to get this up before this weekend. If I do get it up for this weekend, come see us at Son of Monster Palooza this weekend in Burbank, yes. California. Um, I think I might be. Able, it's Monday. I might be able to. We will all be yeah. there. We will yeah. all be there ready yeah. to say hello with a smile on our faces. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it, it's always great for the fans to like to meet you too. And I'm I'm like more than willing to like talk about the monsters until anybody wants and, and everybody else has their stories too that they want to share. So it's it's fun. It's like a you know big love fest. Yeah, it's a blast. It is. So come, come out and see us, and go see Halloween Ends this weekend. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. right. Go see Halloween Ends, and then come to Monster Palooza, and then come to Monster Palooza. Right. Yeah, right. and tell Chris how much you hated it. How much oh, you hated yeah. it? I'm, I'm how you killed you bring killed it the on. franchise. Bring it on. <laughs> Good luck. That's what you wish for. Oh, dude, trust me, I know. Uh, all right. All right. Well, thank you guys. This was fun. Thank I'm, you, Jeff. I'm glad it was relaxed and uh, yeah, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> <nothing> <laughs> Good luck to everything, man. You. Hope to see you in a lot more stuff soon. Yeah, thank you. I love I'd love to work with you someday. Hell yeah, man. I'm there in a second. Yeah, but you have to recommend me. I think. Okay, I got you. <laughs> I'm working. I'll get on it. Yeah. I get on it. All right. All right, <laughs> All thank right. you guys. All Thanks, right. Jeff. Yo, what's up, peeps? Sean here, just reminding you that our T Public store is still up and running. We got t shirts, we got all kinds of stuff. You can get mugs, you can get rugs, you can get glasses, you can get this is and that is and bibs and hats and all kinds of crap they make. Thing with two heads, Whore's Hollow Grounds, Hollywood's Hollow Grounds, all kinds of crazy crap. T Public backslash user, blah, 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 blah. Let me say that again, tpublic.com backslash user, backslash malfunction. I can't talk. tpublic.com backslash user, backslash malfunction, and you can get all that crazy stuff. And if you guys want stickers, we got stickers. God damn it, we got stickers. We got new stickers, just came in. Check it out, new horse hog ground stickers. And you take them out of the package. And we got these sweet ass New thing with two head stickers, the awesome Mark Beer artwork. Look at that, I gotta take these out so I can show you. They're so cool. How cool are those? Now you can stick our heads on shit. You gotta love that. If you want stickers, send your name. Uh, let, me, let me do that again. If you want free stickers, just send a self-addressed stamp envelope to the address below. Boom, boom, boom. Just make sure it's not a padded envelope because those cost more to return. So just put enough postage on there for, you know, some stickers and in an envelope big enough to hold one of these bad boys. And uh, we will send you free stickers because we love you.
But that's what we're about, baby. We're all about the love. Sam thinks so. All right. Yeah. Yo, hold on just one sec. I got to pee real bad. Sorry. <laughs> this, is this, this is part of the show, Jeff. Does he do it during? So are we still part of the show or does he edit? It he depends edit. if we say anything funny or not. He'll more than likely edit it, but unless we're super entertaining, he'll leave it in. Yeah. So say something really funny. Well, I don't know about funny. 